And literally what the Scripture is saying is because of Christ's love, you and I have some obligations. Friend, can I say to you that it's a wrong attitude to feel obligated to live for God, but you ought to? In other words, it's unreasonable for somebody who has been lost and dead in their trespasses and sins to feel as though they don't have any obligation to live for Christ when He died on the cross for their sins. He became sin for you. And His love ought to constrain or obligate you to service. Friend, you ought to feel obligated. You don't, I, I, I struggle with this. Uh, sometimes it, as a pastor, you feel like people, you know, just feel like, you know, a lot of times I say, well, you know what, if you feel obligated, don't do it. If you feel like the reason you want to do uh, go on door-to-door -door visitation, or the reason you want to serve uh, in working in children's church, or the reason uh, you want to uh, work on the bus, or the, uh, the reason that you uh, clean the church, or uh, just things that need to be done, is because... Well, they need to be done and somebody obligated you to. My attitude many times is forget it. God doesn't need that kind of attitude. But friend, I want to tell you something. The Scripture says, biblically, scripturally speaking, that you and I are constrained or obligated literally because of the love of Christ. By the way, this constraint is not a bondage. This constraint is one of freedom because... Without Christ, you wouldn't be free to do anything but to live for this uh, for your flesh, which glorifies or brings glory to God's enemy, Satan, which ultimately will destroy you. In other words, your obligation would be to do that which would destroy you instead of that which would help you. But the Bible says because of what Christ has done, you and I are constrained. The love of Christ constraineth us. In other words, uh, there is literally, it keeps us from this and keeps us in this. For you're saved, you're obligated to certain things. Now that you're saved, you're obligated to Christ. You see this? Now, friend, this kind of constraint is not a restraint. It's not one of these things where it's like, well, I don't have any freedom anymore. My fr friend, freedom is serving God. It really is. But we as Christians don't understand liberty, biblically, scripturally speaking. A lot of times we think liberty is, oh, I can do whatever I want now. I can serve my flesh. Friend, you serve your flesh and you're a slave to it. And you're not free. But if you serve Christ, there's a whole different matter. And the Bible says, we thus judge that if Christ died for all, then we're all dead. Our constraint is this. If Jesus paid the price to own you, then you're owned. In other words, if Christ died for everyone, the reason for it was because they were dead. And if you see serving Christ as an obligation, it's, not, it's because you have a false conception of what you were before Christ. Jesus died for you because you needed Him to. Jesus died on the cross for you because you needed Him to. And friend... The fact that He obligated Himself to die for you obligates you to live for Him and to love Him. His love obligates you. You ever felt obligated because of the person? I do sometimes. You know, we, we have... The Lord has really given us in our church people that, are, that have servants' hearts. Really. Uh, I have just been so blessed by people that you can just call and you know they'll serve because they love. They serve. They really do. We have people in our church, if you break down, you can call them, and they'll come get you at any hour of the night, really, and and fix your car for you, and pay the bill for it, and just just do things because they love. And, uh, <clears throat> and honestly, I don't know of any other pastor that has a larger percentage of people that are willing to serve than we have in this church. The Lord's really blessed us with that. Um, the motivation for service for our people is not pastor can do something for us. But you know what? Because of the people that serve in our church, sometimes I'm obligated. In other words, somebody calls me and they say, Pastor, I'm stranded. You know what my question is? If I called them and I was stranded, would they come for me? It's a good question to ask, isn't it? I mean, there are some people, there, there are people that are users. And if 
they were stranded, they'd call you. But if you were stranded, they'd have a good reason why they couldn't help you. You know what? I'm sorry. My, my family's in bed and I've got to work tomorrow, so on and so forth. But if the reverse was true, you'd get up and in spite of the, your needs, you would meet theirs. You know, one of the things that constrains me many times is the fact that other folks are so generous to me. In other words, well, I'd tell them no, except that there's no way in the, and if the situation were reversed that they'd tell me no. Do you see what I'm saying here? And friend, if it were Christ for you, He already proved it. We know what Christ would do. Right? We're dead in our trespasses and sins. We're needy. He's not. Christ didn't need us when He died on the cross. We needed Him. And He proved what He'd do when He became sin for us. And so our question when we serve Christ is, what would God do for me? Do you see that? Well, the love of Christ constrains us. In other words, okay, we've got an obligation here because He proved that He would do for us what He didn't have to. He showed His generosity. Okay, now, now, uh, then the Scripture says, if one died for all, then we're all dead. So our understanding is if Christ died for us, it's because we needed Him too. There's no person that can say, well, God, you didn't need to die for me. Jesus Christ died for everyone because everyone needed Him too. So then the question is, who is obligated or constrained by Christ's love? Somebody speak out just in case I have rambled so much and I've lost you. Who's obligated or constrained because of Christ's love? Who? No one. Everyone. Everyone. If He died for everybody, then it was because everybody needed Him to. If He died for everybody, it was because everybody was dead. Okay, because of that. And the Scripture says, And that he, he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them and rose again. By the way, this Scripture blows the doctrine that would teach that God picks people to go to heaven and picks people to go to hell out of the water. The Scripture in this context says Christ died for all. And then it says there are a category of, or, of people who have received who have received life. And those people that have received life, the Bible says, aren't picked or chosen, but literally they are individuals that ought to understand that they don't live now for themselves. They live under the one that died for them and rose again. Friend, have you been saved? Has Christ saved you? Can I say to you that there that the Bible very plainly teaches that you ought to live for him? And there's no exception. Pastor, we know that. That makes sense. Friend, if we knew that, then why don't we live it? So this is something we can make application of because we don't always live as though we're wholly obligated to God. Now, wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, henceforth means from here on know we Him no more. Friend, when you're saved in Jesus Christ, you no longer live after the flesh. Because Christ didn't just die. He was buried and He rose again. He's risen again. And we're not just dead in Christ. We're also alive. Now, I want to look at this. First of all, we've seen this morning an obligation for service. Because Christ died on the cross for you and me, we're obligated to live for Him. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I've heard people take this verse by itself and say, see, this person's not saved because they're not changed. You ever heard somebody take this passage of Scripture? Well, I don't know if they're saved or not because the Bible says, wherefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Behold, all things, our old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Friend, this Scripture is not written to help us to discern whether or not somebody's saved. This Scripture is written for people who have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to know why you're saved and what you're supposed to be as a result of it. Friend, the Bible says that Christ's love constrains us and if Jesus Christ constrains you because of His love, in other words, if you're obligated to serve Him, then this matter of being a new creature is volitional. 
Volitional means 